and welcome to the Congregational Church of Brookfield on this beautiful Sunday morning. Um, it's beautiful because of all of you. <laughs> we are so delighted to have you all here and worship with us this morning. And please know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, whether you are here with us in person or joining us from our virtual balcony today. Um, as we go through a few announcements, I'm going to invite our ushers, if you wouldn't mind, to pass our fellowship hats. If you could sign these, that would be greatly appreciated. And if you have others in your pew with you, uh, please do pass them along and let them have them as well. Um, you are invited after this worship service to come downstairs and uh, spend some time in hospitality with us. Our Christian Education Committee uh, has uh, some goodies all set up downstairs. Um, and actually, I should make note that during this service, um, any 8th through 12th graders who would be interested um, are participating in a service project downstairs in our fellowship hall. Um, an opportunity to uh, help prep some stuff for the next announcement that I have, which is our Great Pumpkin Challenge. So our Great Pumpkin Challenge is this evening from 5 to 6.30. Uh, for those of you who have not been around for a Great Pumpkin Challenge in the past, um, it's our opportunity to um, eat together <laughs> and also to carve pumpkins that then go to um, Trinity Episcopal Church in Newtown, where they go on display for Halloween uh, day and evening. Um, we invite donations uh, from people who come out to help, and there'll actually be some pumpkins that you will see by the doors at the end of worship if you'd like a, to make a donation, even if you can't be here tonight. All of those donations go to support um, scholarships for the Hole in the Wall Gang Camp, which is a camp for uh, terminally and chronically ill children. Um, so if you'd like to make a donation, you can do that on your way out. As a follow-up to a Halloween announcement, um, if you are someone who tends to overbuy your Halloween candy um, and you don't want it all in your house after Halloween, we'll take it. Um, and we'll take it because we send it off to our college uh, students in their college care packages as they head toward the end of their semesters. Um, so if you have leftover Halloween candy and you want it to um, be rehoused to a good place, bring it on here uh, during the week this week or next Sunday, and we will gratefully uh, rec receive it. There's also information in your bulletins about a pumpkin and apple pie fundraiser that um, you'll be able to make uh, orders for starting next Sunday, and as well as uh, Together Women Rise, which will meet on Monday, November 6th, uh, to support an organization called Empowering Foundations for Women and Their Children out of Vietnam. Um, the other important announcement for today is this. Um, next Saturday into Sunday, daylight savings time ends. I know everyone's like, ah, oh, again, right? So um, I had many funny faces that were shown at me when I said that during the 8.30 service. Um, so I invite you just to follow the timing, change your clocks if you want to be here on time. Um, and even if you don't show up on time, we'll still love you and welcome you with open arms. But if you want to be on time, make sure you change your clocks the right way uh, next Saturday into Sunday. And I know uh, Jim Sugden has one other announcement for us, to be sure. Me again. <laughs> um, what more appropriate morning than um, our morning of remembrance to mention our 1757 Legacy Fellowship. One of the major challenges we faced this year as a church uh, with our budget was that um, the distribution made by our endowment is largely dependent on the market value at the end of each year, and it can rise and fall with the market. And this year, it was not as hopeful as it might have been. So I'd like you to keep in your mind and in your planning the Legacy uh, Fellowship, because it's a way that you can provide for the church's endowment out into the future and all the good works that come from this church. And although we know there are many tax benefits involved, especially in doing your planning and a tax with an eye toward the tax benefits, we know that really people provide for the Legacy Foundation, the Legacy Fellowship, because they love this church. And they love the things that we do here. So there are a number of book kits, booklets, on the table by the door. If the spirit moves you, pick one up, take it home, and learn more about the 17 fellow, 1757 Legacy Fellowship. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. The 
other thing that we should make note of is that this is um, Pastor Bryn's first uh, Sunday of family leave, and so we are blessing her uh, on her way as she has an opportunity to spend some time with um, her dad and family members down in North Carolina uh, later this week and throughout the month of November. So friends, as we do gather and worship this morning, we um, realize that we are living in a world that is in deep need of peace. And so we remember how Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And we unite our prayers and hopefully our actions with others around the world who are seeking and working towards God's peace. So let us now take a few moments of silence to prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the tolling of our church bell. Friends, will you join with me now in our responsive call to worship, which is printed in your bulletins this morning. Come, let us delight in the law of the Lord. Our joy is found in the love of God and neighbor. Come, let us be nourished by the living water. Together, we will worship the one who enables us to thrive. And now let us continue joining our spirits and our voices in our unison prayer of approach. Still speaking, God. We thank you for the ways you offer your guidance and wisdom for us today, as much as you did for our ancestors in faith and for the saints who have gone before us. Give us a deep love for your living word and for all those you claim as your beloved. Help us to avoid the paths of gossip and one-upsmanship that this world promotes. Instead, make us gentle and compassionate humble and forgiving, just and holy in our relationships and interactions with one another and all those we encounter. Send your spirit upon us in our time together that we may find ourselves more deeply rooted in you in hopes of learning, growing, and bearing good fruit into a hurting world. Help us to be ever more like Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now I'd like to invite any children who'd like to come forward to spend some time with us. You're just going to have to come down the side aisles, guys, to spend some time with Mrs. Washak. Okay, I have, is my 
Is my mic working? Yeah. yeah, good. Okay, good. Here they come. Yay. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, we're all spread out. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Uh -huh. Good morning, all. So I decided to be something different today. Actually, I'm going to be a couple of things. You have to use your imagination, all right, because all I have is a hat. You have to imagine the rest of it. Okay, here we are. I didn't realize there were. There's more. There's more. Oh, wait. There's more. Oh, wait but wait. <laughs> okay, so you have to imagine. Who am I? I am a pilgrim, right? I am a pilgrim and we are in the house of worship and we are settling a new land. Am I really a pilgrim? No. Okay, but I can pretend, right? Okay, how about this? All right, go Cubbies, right? I am a Cubs fan or maybe I'm a Cubs player. Home run, of course. <laughs> I don't think I want to be a Cubs fan. I want to be a cowboy. I'm going to lasso me some cattle. Okay? Now, I'm thinking of Halloween, right? That's coming up real soon. And that's a time when we dress up to be something different, right? But are we really that thing that's different? No, not really. We're still the same us on the inside, okay? And actually, God sees what's on the inside. And that's what really matters. I can dress up to be whatever I want, but I'm not really that thing. I'm who I am on the inside. We can redo our hair, dress differently, and look different, but who we are on the inside is what's most important. God tells Samuel in 1 Samuel, he says this in the Bible, the Lord does not look at things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. God sees the beauty inside of us. Our jobs, our cars, our clothing are all things that the people see. But they are not the most important thing, and that's not what God sees. And the closer we get to God, the more we want to work on those things on the inside, where what we look like really matters. So our beauty on the inside might include our honesty, our ability to think of others, to care for others, to give others like first chance to get something and you go second, that kind of thing. That makes us beautiful on the inside. So no matter what we look like on the outside, that doesn't matter. It's what, it's what is going on on the inside of our hearts that we should focus on and also notice in others. So let's ha have a quick prayer. And by the way, I do wish you a wonderful Halloween. But no matter what you dress up of, I know you're still you on the inside. Dear God, thank you for the beauty inside each one of us and help us to grow even more beautiful as we focus on you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. So. so friends, as our kiddos head downstairs, I'm gonna invite the rest of you to rise as you are able in body or spirit and to join with us in singing our opening hymn.
Please be seated. Will you pray with me? God, of those who have gone before us and of the present, we pray that your word will not fall on deaf ears, on closed minds, on hardened hearts. May your word shared here today open our minds and our hearts to hear the richness of your love, the depth of your grace, the strength of your call and guidance. Amen. So this morning's first reading is from Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. And the second scripture is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 through 40, about the greatest commandment. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, an expert in the law, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and all the prophets. May God add a blessing to our understanding of these words. Amen. Friends, will you pray with me for a moment? <clears throat> Holy One, in these moments, help us to be still. To be still and know that you are God and that your presence surrounds us here together. Settle in us all that is unsettled, even if just for these moments, so that we might truly open ourselves up, our hearts, our minds, our lives, to the words that you have for each of us today. Amen. So I've been thinking a lot about my grandpa lately. <coughs> Thoughts of him have come up because of conversations in our Monday morning women's study and at the ordination that Bryn and I had the opportunity to be part of uh, last Sunday. You see, as they say, hindsight is 2020. And although I tried really, really hard for a while to deny a call to ministry in the church, in looking back, I realized that it was at my grandpa's funeral, my sophomore year of high school, that I actually received my call to ministry. <laughs> My mentor pastor, my associate pastor at the time, asked me to do a eulogy for my grandpa on behalf of all of the grandkids. And I said tentatively, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I did it. And it would be easy to say that the rest is history. But we all know that life is not generally that simple. But on this day, this day of remembrance in the life of our church, it's fitting that my grandpa has been on my mind a lot lately. See, John F. De Bishop Sr. was a man of deep faith. He read the Bible cover to cover more than once. He is one of the reasons that our church was such an important part of our lives as I was growing up. He was a skilled mechanic, and after he retired from the military, that's how he made his living. He was hardworking and disciplined. He was a pretty quiet guy who loved Fords. He used to say he'd rather push a Ford than drive a Chevy. <laughs> and reading Westerns. When I think of the ways that he showed love, it was through service to his community and his country. And in our family, he showed love through accountability and laughter. Sunday dinners were spent at my grandparents' house and you knew when you did something that wasn't right in my grandpa's eyes. He had a look that he would shoot you when you said or did something that was disrespectful or against the house rules. Between that stare and the love behind it, you learned your lesson. And yet, he also had a soft spot and could get to laughing at the head of the table 
a deep and hearty laugh that brought him and all of us around him to both laughter and those tears that come from really deep laughter. Now, when I think of my grandpa, I can't help but think of his partner in crime, Jean Adams Halstead de Bishop, or Grandma Jean, as she was known to all of the people at the church where I grew up. Where Grandpa was about accountability and showing respect as signs of love, Grandma was the one who wanted you to sit with her, to bake zucchini bread with the zucchinis that came straight out the garden, who showed up at events and made time for folks, who unintentionally made people crack up laughing, who had over 200 people and four generations celebrate her 90th birthday and sign cards, love you bunches. It's days like today, our Book of Remembrance Sunday or All Saints celebration that we think about the people who have touched our lives, who have lived in a way that we would identify as faithful or faith-filled, who have left a legacy. And that's what I think of when I think of the words from Psalm 1, where it says that those who delight in the law of the Lord and don't fall prey to the wicked way are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season, and their lives, their leaves do not wither. This psalm follows in the way of the wisdom literature. It assumes that those reading have received at least a little bit of instruction shared in the scriptures before about how to live a good and faithful life, following a way directed by God and clear and moral expectations. It lends this advice for living. Don't follow in the way of the wicked. Instead, follow God's law. Now God's law at the time were wrapped up in the ten, around things like the Ten Commandments and the words from Deuteronomy that said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and strength. And as we enter into the story of the Pharisees trying to trick and test Jesus in Matthew's gospel, we hear similar words, words that Jesus would have known having studied the scripture, words that he says are the undergirding of everything, every law that was and was to come. He says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On this, all the law and the prophets hang, all that governs people in everyday living and perhaps even beyond is to be based on love to consider how we wish to be loved and then to do the same for others, to believe that there really is enough to go around and that the flourishing of another's life might mean the flourishing of all life. It means loving what God loves. As we discussed this at Bible study, we talked about the challenge of the word love. Love's both a noun and a verb. It sounds the same whether I'm telling someone that I love their outfit or whether I'm telling my partner and my children that I love them. And we realize that because we're all created and wired differently, much like my grandparents, we have different ways of showing and sharing love. Love can mean cheering from the sidelines or the auditorium seats. It can mean also working extra hours to put food on the table and a roof overhead. Sometimes love means apologizing. And other times, it means taking care of yourself. Sometimes love means walking away or stepping back, and other times it means leaning in. Love means serving the world, using the gifts you've been given, and it means knowing when you have to take a break to keep your mental health intact. Love means holding people accountable and being held accountable. It means not allowing yourself to get hurt or reaching out for help when you do. It may mean loving someone through something, showing some extra attention or care when they are in the midst of a time when it seems like the light might not shine on or through them again. Sometimes love means marching with a social movement and other times it means sitting at home and knitting a prayer shawl. It can mean advocating or sharing an unpopular opinion or speaking the truth. And it may mean requesting prayers or praying for someone with whom we disagree. Love can be fixing someone's porch, or car, or day, or preparing someone to face a challenge that's coming ahead. Love can mean asking someone, as we were reminded in our Monday Morning Women's Study this last week, whether they need to be hugged, heard, or helped when they come to you hurting, and it 
also can mean celebrating a win, large or small, whatever it may be, alongside someone. Love can mean believing in someone, holding a space for hope for them when they can't do it for themselves. And love can mean making difficult decisions, like choosing quality over quantity in things or even life. As the things of this world, the things we hold in tension each day, wars and shootings, celebrations and new life prove to us, we can never truly know what's around the next corner. Jesus shared this wisdom about basing everything, each decision, law, next move, on love of God, love of self, and love of neighbor, shortly before he would add fuel to the fire of the disagreements that in large part led to his death on a cross where until his last breath, he continued to speak words and carry out actions of forgiveness and love. What would our homes, our community, our country, and our world look like if we did the same? Truth is that we don't know when the season will be when our lives, our words, and our actions will produce fruit. We don't always know the impact that we've made or will make, but God knows. So knowing that we have been loved by God since the moment we came into this world, may we have the courage and wisdom to live in love, loving God and others in our own ways, the best way we know how, following the example of those who have gone before us and of Jesus Christ. And may those words and actions of love bear fruit for God's kingdom of love, peace, and justice now and in the days ahead. Amen. Friends, as I invite Carol and Richard to come up and join me up here for our Servants of Remembrance, I would invite you all to find the insert that is printed in your bulletins that bears the same title. Come on up and see. Right so 
friends, each spring on Memorial Day weekend and each fall on the Sunday closest to All Saints Day, we take a little extra time to think about, remember, and honor loved ones who have guided and inspired us on our way as people of faith. While there are many of those saints who have gone before us who reside in our memories and in our hearts, those whose names are read aloud today have been remembered over the past half year by donations to our Book of Remembrance Fund, which are gratefully received to be used at some future time for the enhancement of our ministries and the good of the church. Friends, thinking about those who have taught us by their example how to live our faith and the spirit of God present with us, will you join with me in the affirmation of faith from Paul's letter to the Romans that is printed in your bulletins? We know, know that, that in everything, everything God, God works, works for good with those who love God, God who are, are called, called according to God's purpose. purpose. We, we are sure that, that neither death nor life, nor, life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor, height, nor depth, nor, nor anything else in all creation, creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So friends, God calls us all to live our faith in our everyday lives, to be people of the Holy Spirit, bound together with all those who in every place and every time have shared this affirmation about God's love, sought the presence of the risen Christ, and called upon his name. So this morning, we remember. Roland and Pauline Bankus. Sandy Bowton, David R. Brown. From the book of Job, for I know that my Redeemer lives, and at last he will stand upon the earth. Keith Burdick, Sr., Robert E. Carpenter, Robert and Mita Carpenter. From Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Bill Klein, Ada Cooper, Barbara Kogel. Also from Psalm 23. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lillian Coville, Frank and Elizabeth Cuomo, Mary Domino. Or Demi. Demi. <laughs> in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus taught them, saying, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. M. Sergeant Desmond, Millicent Donardo, Thomas Eaker. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hugh Fisher, Walt Fisher, Jeffrey Fite. At the end of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus appeared to his disciples in Galilee and made them this promise. Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jennifer Ford. Donna Geck, Dr. Leonard, and Rosito Jennerson. In his letter to the Romans, Paul writes, If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Tony Jordan, Margaret Peg Caswer, Horst Lentz. In John's Gospel, Jesus said, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. Marion Ramsey Miller, Don Morin, John and Millicent Morrison. The psalmist wrote, I lift my eyes to the hills. From whence does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Kathy Jo Otto Shabbat, Frank Patello, Carol Ann Powers. From Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Be still and know that I am God. Roger and Irene Purcell, Patricia Rowling, Nicholas Rushmeyer. So faith, hope, and love abide these three, but the greatest of these is love. Seth Sanford, Tommy Sanford, Jane Showa. From Ecclesiastes, the preacher, for everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Margita Savo, Christopher Slater, Ernie Trowbridge. In John's Gospel, Jesus spoke to his disciples, saying, Peace I leave with you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. 
Norma Visconti, Larry Vodra, Margaret L. Wolf. In his first letter to the Corinthians, Paul writes, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Will you join me in the prayer printed in your bulletin? Living God, we thank you for the gift of life and your promise of unending love. We thank you for all those who, having served you well, now rest from their labors. We thank you for the great cloud of witnesses, all the saints remembered and forgotten, those dear souls most precious to us, and for the witness they shared with their life to your great love and work. Teach us to follow their example to the best of our ability, to feed, to support, to comfort, to encourage and affirm, to cherish others, and to work for the building up of your kingdom. May we live following the way of the saints who have gone before and of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Now, friends, I would invite you to remain seated, but to join with us in singing our response for all the saints. to a time to share some of the prayers um, that are on our hearts and in our minds as we look at our world and as we look um, at what is going on in our own lives as well. So as we look out at the world, we are in prayer for those recovering from catastrophic storms, including the um, Category 5 hurricane that hit Mexico just this past week. Uh, we are praying for peace in our homes, our town, our country, our world amid political division and war. Uh, we lift, once again, special prayers for peace as war is raging in Israel and Ukraine, where um, we have connections with people um, who are very near and dear to our hearts. Um, and for those, especially our Jewish and Islamic brothers and sisters who are experiencing acts of hate and violence as an effect of that war as well. Um, and of course, we lift up the victims, survivors and families of those involved in the latest mass shootings, um, that in Lewiston, Maine, and Tampa, and a variety of other places just over these last few days. Um, friends, uh, that brings the toll to 576 just this year alone. And so we pray that we may take steps as communities and as a nation moving forward that will stem the tide of these tragedies as well. Um, we pray for those who um, are in our own church family who are grieving, too, even as we um, share our prayers over those who are grieving in the world. But uh, we pray today for Bruce and Kathy and their family as they grieve the death of Bruce's mom, Georgina. For Shannon and Aiden and family as they grieve the death of their husband and father, Fred, who died on Friday after a tragic accident. For uh, Ruth Rada, who is away celebrating her cousin's life this weekend. Um, and uh, at 8.30 this morning, we were praying for Dan and Heather, Glenn and Alex and family as they had just made the difficult decision to um, put Jane on comfort care after um, she was unable to get the liver transplant that we had been um, praying for her over. And unfortunately, between services, we got the news that Jane had passed away. And so we hold them um, in prayers and in love as they grieve. 
Uh, we have a number of folks who are recovering from procedures and surgeries like Jennifer and Ed, both of whom we are blessed to have and worship with us today. Uh, we are praying for those who are in hospital, for Larry, who's now recovering from surgery, and for Monica's brother, Todd, uh, who had surgery uh, just following a, a brain aneurysm after, actually after this last Friday. Uh, we are praying for those uh, struggling with serious other health challenges, for Ruth's son, Tom, and Wendy's father, Jeffrey, who will begin his treatment this week, for Lisa Marie and Ruth and Warren's son, David. Um, we're praying for the members and friends of our church in treatment for cancer. Um, today we're praying especially for Barbara's brother and father, both named Doug, uh, for Ruth's friend Joan, and for Allison's friend Patty. And we're praying for those who are dealing uh, with mental health struggles, addiction, um, and other challenges at home and work or in relationships. Um, and we are actually also praying for Barbara and Poppy who have spent the morning in the ER as Poppy cut her finger in her hand this morning. Um, so we are surrounding them with prayers um, as they hopefully return to us soon. Um, and we're praying for all of the caregivers who walk the journey with all of these who we lift up for reason of concern. And um, Miss Debbie created this beautiful prayer shawl along with the help of her sister. Uh, and so we are praying uh, prayers of God's blessing upon um, not only the shawl, but upon the person who will receive it, that they will feel the love and um, prayers and surrounding them from our community here in this place. Um, and knowing that that was a heavy list of concerns, um, we have joys to share today as well. Um, we got the good news that Marty's um, brain tumor has shrunk, uh, and so that is a blessing that they asked that we share with her church family. Uh, we pray for Curtis and his family as his nephew, the Reverend Will Tanner, is installed as the pastor at the Middletown Church today. Um, for Sharon and Carlo's 50th wedding anniversary, uh, in celebration of their anniversary, these beautiful flowers have been provided for us uh, this morning. Um, we are lifting up uh, Avery's fifth birthday this coming Thursday. Um, not only is it huge because it's a fifth birthday and fifth birthdays are milestone birthdays, but also because um, Avery went through chemo with her mama Kim uh, as Kim was being treated for breast cancer while she was in the womb. And so um, they have since been ambassadors for the Hope for Two, the Pregnant with Cancer Network. Um, and have shared hope with others who have followed their paths. But we are praying um, prayers of joy and celebration for Avery's healthy life. Um, and uh, I just wanted to lift up prayers too for um, Sean's ministry among us, right? So now you've seen Sean do all the things. He's sung, he's played the guitar, he's played the organ, he's played the piano, he's brought our children's choirs up here to, to share along with Patty and he has um, now led our bell choir. So rock on bell choir. Uh, great job this morning. <laughs> Um, and he's stuck with me for the next month, so, ha <laughs> <laughs> um, So friends, I know that uh, many of you come with other thoughts, uh, prayer concerns, and joys on your hearts and in your minds, and so I will leave a bit of silence at the beginning of um, our prayers this morning in order for you to lift those up to God in whatever way is best for you. Um, the words of prayer that will be shared this morning um, are... A bit of mine and a bit of um, an online colleague, the Reverend Anna George Trainham. So let us join our hearts and our souls in the spirit of prayer. Oh God. God, we realize as we begin our prayers this day <laughs> that there are so many who are in need of being surrounded by love and by prayer, including those for whom those sirens are traveling. God, we thank you for moments of silence where we might be able to hear you in a different way and we might be able to lift up our hearts, our prayers, our thoughts to you as well. God, we pray that you would speak to us today and humble us to hear your word. Make us still enough to notice your presence, quiet enough to hear your voice, brave enough to speak your good news, and wise enough to follow your spirit. God, so often we pray for life and we are right to do that. Prayers for preserving life and prolonging life, guarding life, beginning life, to make the ends of life peaceful and blessed. 
And yet today we pray for something a bit different. We pray for the courage to lose our life for your sake, to lose the parts of life that this world imposes and calls us to take up, and instead to follow in your way of love and justice. May we have wisdom to find life abundant walking in your path, and may we offer that life abundant to others by sharing your story and your love, each in our own way and following your way in wisdom. As our ancestors in faith were challenged to be faithful at all costs, help us to know what it means to give up some of our comforts so other might, others might live, and not only live, but also thrive. When we hear stories that move us, may we not leave them as just stories on a screen or a page, but may they seep into our hearts and lives and translate into action. Because God, we pray for your children everywhere, for those we have lifted up who are close on the hearts of our own community here, and for all of your people who are suffering, those who woke up today to the realization once again of life taken, to the sounds of bombs, to words or acts of hate, to less than what they need to survive. Holy Comforter, Challenger, Redeemer. We know you are in our midst and you celebrate the joys of our lives as well. And we pray that you would help us to recognize your spirit on the move and empower us to join your work. Help us to be your church, transformed and transforming. Help us to be your people, formed and yet still growing, learning and becoming. Help us boldly share the news of your love through our words and deeds for such a time as this. Amen. And now, friends, we are blessed today to have an opportunity to hear a faith moment from John Mangold. Good morning. I grew up in the Roman Catholic Church and was an altar boy during third and fourth grade at St. Mary's Parish in Richfield which I'm sure made my mother very happy. She was one of those individuals that had an undeniable faith in God. You could give her 50 reasons why you could not prove that there was a God, and it would never have changed her mind, her belief. I went to religious education growing up, and I must say I believed all the things that we were taught. They all sounded good. The Ten Commandments, Jesus helps the blind to see, heals the sick, performs miracles. But it was the notion that as a good Christian, we are supposed to spread the word of God that I struggled with. I mean, how could I tell other people to believe in the Lord when I was not so sure myself that God really exists? I felt like I was a 90% believer. I wanted to have that undeniable 100% faith like my mom had, but I just could not get there. I mean, it's not like you can just invite God over to Sunday dinner and talk about the ups and downs of life. That all changed for me in 2003. My faith in God became unshakable, oddly enough, because of the unexpected death of my brother Paul. He was 47 years old, he lived in Juneau, Alaska, had three kids, wonderful kids, and was divorced. I have to admit, I struggled with the decision to make to the journey to Alaska for Paul's memorial service. After all, it wasn't just a couple hours drive, and at the time, I was a stay-at-home dad, and my third child, Ben, was only 17 days old. So I really felt my responsibilities were here in Brookfield. At the time, we were members of Prince of Peace Lutheran Church, and Pastor Mark gave me some wonderful advice. He said, you really need to think about one week after Paul's service, will you be okay with your decision? And that was like a light bulb going off, and I knew I had to be in Juneau. The first sign that maybe God was with me on this trip came from Alaskan Airlines. Back in 2003, Airlines actually gave you a meal on a, on a tray, and there was a business card on it with the Alaskan Airlines logo and picture of the Alaskan Mountains. On the back of the card had Psalm 107 printed on it. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. That was really good timing because I really needed some reassurance that God was with me on this trip. To be honest, I think I cried halfway to Alaska. So that was really important. We had Paul's service at a beautiful stone church that he loved on the outskirts of Juneau at Eagle Beach. Several days later after returning home to Connecticut, I was laying in bed with my better half, Kelly. 
and discussing all the things that happened and everything that people said. After a half an hour, I just I knew I needed a break, and I said to Kelly, I'm going to go finish the dishes in the kitchen. As I was walking through the dining room, I heard in my head two words. They were, just pray. And the amazing thing about it was I did not say those words. I did not think them, but I sure did hear them. When I got to the kitchen sink, I did as I was told, knelt down on the floor. I'm not sure why I knelt down. I guess it was a little bit of leftover Roman Catholic practice <laughs> from those days. I said a very short prayer. I just asked to be with my, God to be with my brother Paul and for God to be with my immediate family the coming weekend as we were going to have Paul's service at Prince of Peace for friends and family, and it was going to be a really hard weekend. When I stood up, at first I felt like a 1,000 pounds had been lifted off my shoulders. And then I felt a rush of pure joy and love in my heart. I knew then and there, in that instant, that my faith in God had just been changed forever. When I told the story of Just Pray to Pastor Mark, he said, sometimes we miss hearing God or seeing God, even though he is speaking to us. Because in order to hear him, our heart has to be 100% open to God. When I told the story to Paul's daughter, Savannah, she said that Just Pray is what Paul always said to his three children. And when I told Paul's ex-wife this story, she said the most powerful words that anyone has ever said to me. She said, Johnny, the Holy Spirit is inside you. So for me, it does not matter who said those two words to me that day, whether it was Paul, my mother in heaven, God, or the Holy Spirit. What matters is I was given the proof I was so longing for to be a 100% believer in God the proof to be able to confidently say to a stranger in the street or the guys at Men's Fellowship or to any congregation, you should believe in God. God is real. Prayer does work. The proof to be able to say, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. We miss you, Paul. Amen. And we are so grateful for your sharing of that faith moment. Um, and friends, we are so grateful for all of the ways that you share your deep faith, your love, your gifts with this congregation. And now we have an opportunity to offer some of those gifts back to the work of this and all of Christ Church. So this morning's offering will now be received.
friends, will you join with me now in our offertory prayer? Generous and gifting God, we thank you for that all that you have provided for us, the love and care of dear ones, the gifts that you have planted in us for service, and the treasures that have come from the good use of those gifts. Help us to be good stewards of all that you have first given and of the offerings brought today. Bless us with a spirit of generosity that inspires us to share widely and deeply in order to help bring about your kingdom of love. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And now I invite you to join with us in singing our closing hymn, The Gift of Love. you with loving kindness and grant you peace. And may God watch between and among us until we meet again. Amen. And now blessed by the peace of Christ, let us share a word or a sign of that peace with one another in this place and especially bring those words and actions of peace out into the world. The peace of Christ be with you all.